Hello everybody, this is going to be a delayed release video. Uh, my opponent needed a prep game against Gorshade 4 Legions before uh, the ATC, so I will be releasing this after the ATC, just in case any of you are ATC players that are also Gorshade 4 players. Uh, nothing against you, the, this guy is just my buddy. So... We scanned through the ATC list and we noticed that Gorshade 4 was very, very common, very popular. And I basically grabbed what was the most common variant of the list, which is Double Sentinels and Desters. And there is Double Sentinels and Tridents, and we just decided to talk about that. Uh, we also then looked at all the pairings with Gorshade 4, and we figured out what his drop between his two pairings would be. We decided it was going to be Lucant, regardless of what the other pairing is. If they're running Virus 2 Forges or they're running Assyria, he has lots of gameplay against those and he feels good against it with Lucan. Gorshade 4 is the big giant mystery and question mark. So here we are, putting it on the table, figuring out exactly what it's like, theory crafting it, talking with locals, and coming up with the best way for him to have um, success for his team. So, here we go. Uh, before this game begins, my problem areas are kind of this. I'm going second. I don't like that area in there. I can't really dig deep very easily in that area to dig out the back models. He can hard, he can hide models at the back there behind that forest. He can hide models back over here. And I've got restrictions, even with ghost walk, it's hard to get charge angles and shoot through this gap and get those deep models. That area just looks like a disaster for me. One of the keys to uh, this game is going to be killing off entire units. Um, and one of his keys is going to be denying entire units. Now, Dauntless Resolve really gives me a good, uh, a good, a little bit of decent survivability. So he has the Frustrum Locus, which is this guy right here that is unpainted. And it has the spell on its range 12 gun and it can boost a hit. It can also put mage static on um, his units so that my range 8 um, debuffs are less likely to be applicable since I have to be 3 inches away with either my arc node or a gore shade. And I'm basically getting them in the cut and then losing them. Um, I don't want to have uh, Dauntless Resolve shot off and I also don't want his jacks with the spell to get to it. It's, it's basically going to be useless. So, but I do find a way to use it. Um, I don't think it's going to be useful on the Sentinels almost ever. Um, the Desters are defense 13. With Force Barrier, I can crank them up to 15. And I can also, uh, basically, I can just plan on putting uh, clouds in this area so that the Frustrum Locus, because it's centrally deployed and it's going to go wherever I put Dauntless Resolve, will have to walk into those clouds suffering another minus two to hit. And then I can make really help my odds of hitting, especially if I'm engaged as well. So the plan with Desters this entire game is I want to deny scoring in this zone and score this flag somewhat reliably. And then in this open area over here on this side of the board, I want to win. I want to win this open area and I want to start scoring this and contesting this where he has nothing to contest over here and hopefully get a scenario victory around turn five or six or seven. Uh, that's my win condition that I'm thinking about on this. I've never played Gorshade 4 before, but just if, if I was approaching any type of a game against Lucant, that's an attrition list, this is how I would be approaching it. Uh, my other goal going into this game, I've debated his armor feat and my defensive feat. I think I have to pop feet if I want to win. I have to pop my feet after he pops feet. Um, and I have to present, prevent myself from losing a lot of models. And I have the tools to do that. So that's going to be my goals going forward. Going into this game right right now, he ran up to that position. So I ran my models accordingly. Dauntless Resolve went on the Desters. Uh, Force Barrier went on the Desters. I'm out of uh, 5 and 12, 17 of the Frustrum Locus. Uh, Imperitus, I want to come out around turn 3, and I want him to sp ideally, I mean, I want him to go over here and start killing stuff, but I want to make it project the threat of him going over here and getting a lot of work done. So that's why Imperitus is in the middle of the board. The two clouds kind of deny some charges. Um, also makes it a little bit harder for him to hit if he wants to walk into those clouds and swing on me. Basically, that's it. Uh, I just move my stuff up and, yeah, plan on keeping it out of range. So his turn, 
he uh, runs people up within four and uh, plans on projecting some threat, forcing me to trigger vengeance. I'm fine with this. I want to run my own Sentinels up in his way to get some vengeance as well. Uh, basic plan of attack over here on left side of the board. I, I got a, he didn't pop feet. I got to, you know, play safe, not lose very many models and hold my feet as well. Uh, and I also have a chance to go up on scenario. So plan is have these desters come in and kill him. Have this other dester run right into this gap right here. I'm going to be triggering yellow or, uh, vengeance on this yellow unit. The rest of the yellow unit is stuck behind uh, these shield wall guys with the only opening being right here. So if I can get an unyielding Dauntless Resolved Dester there, there's a chance that I just stop this whole wall from getting to go where it wants to go. Um, and I will then obviously put Dester Thane right here. Artificer will put plus two Force Barrier on them. So uh, they're, as, they're as good to go as possible. Um, so over here on this other side of the board, Plan is Chimera is going to go and slam um, him and try and slam him back that way. Hopefully he doesn't roll more than a nine and do the damage that he needs to. Uh, he'll, basically, I just want him to be out of the way and knocked down. Um, and then I'm just going to start running some Sentinels in to contest uh, this flag and put up a cloud here and put up a cloud here and put the rest of my army in this area right here so that uh, with the Vengeance procs that I'm going to be getting, because also Sentinel's running to right there, with those Vengeance procs, I should be able to chew up a big part of the field. Um, Eris is going to hang out back here. Her turn is her plan is to contest next turn when I want to save Sentinels. Um, she just doesn't have much of a role in this game, since Lucan's always going to have shield guards around him. And this is where we end up. Unfortunately... The slam sends this dude six inches forward. He hits the guy back there, and I end up triggering vengeance on him because I rolled a boosted 10, which does exactly one damage to him. What a little dick. And, uh, yeah, so that sucked. Um, over on this side of the board, um, the distance from here to here is just out of unyielding range, which was a miscalculation, a very unfortunate miscalculation. Yeah, I messed that one up. So his turn. Uh, kill, 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 kill. Um, run people uh, to contest. Over here, kill, kill, make a wall and shield wall. And he was trying to kill the Chimera. Dice just didn't work out. These guys vengeance forward. Uh, plan on charging uh, my unit attachment leader so I don't have iron zeal. Uh, dice flopped and he didn't do crap. Uh, so that's basically where we're at. I lost some sentinels and I lost two desters and uh, didn't feel good. But you know what? I've still got my feet. He just popped his feet. So things have happened. I, I got what I wanted. I, yeah. Oh wait, he got he got another dester. I'm sorry, he got three desters, which actually kind of blows a little bit. Um, yeah. So plan is now. Score is uh, two to two. And my plan is is to take Eris, runner within four over here. Gorshade's gonna plan on popping feet. Um, Oh, yeah, that's right. So this Frustrum Locust came over here, and there was a Dester right here in the cloud uh, with Force Barrier, needed to roll the 11 to hit, rolled the 11 to hit. So now that that's happened, uh, Dauntless Resolve is off the Desters. Um, plan is kill him here, and then charge in a bunch of Sentinels. Chimera's going to apparate and back out. Um, and then Gorshade 4 is going to put Hand of Ice on this yellow unit of Reciprocators. And Paradis is going to come across onto the Reciprocators, and all these other Sentinels are just going to charge in. I'm going to collapse this whole side. My plan is I really want to destroy a full unit over here, and I want to win this side in one swift blow on his feet turn. And then start contesting with Desters in over here, score this flag with Dester Thane, and basically set myself up to obliv uh, obliterate that side. Um, so that does that's the plan. Um, I think it's a really good plan. 
Imperatus is fully loaded up, Hand of Ice lands on this unit, and it just does not work out. Imperatus charges, he misses the charge attack roll, and he just starts flopping on dice, and he only kills one, um, one Reciprocator. Sentinels all charge in, and I don't even know if I kill any Reciprocators. Um, I miss the sevens I need to hit because they have set defense, and things just really do not go my way. And, yeah. Um... These Sentinels do charge the Frustrum Locus. I think they charge the Frustrum Locus. I'm going to have to look at the next screen. Yeah, I get some attacks on the Frustrum Locus, but I don't kill it. Um, yeah. There is, unfortunately, due to also some dice happening. Uh, where the, there's my brush. This dude was supposed to die. Uh there's another guy back here, so it doesn't matter anyways. He'd just come back to life. But nothing really worked out the way I needed it to work out. So Lucan's turn. Everyone comes back, and his goal is to... On, the way he handles my feet turn is pretty good. Um, oh, score. Um, I did not clear this area, so score is 3-2. to two. He handles my feet turn really well. His plan is, is one guy makes an attack against or each guy makes an attack against Imperatus, and then with their second attack, they kill a Sentinel and become stationary. And stationary doesn't apply to him that much because it's not like I'm having a hard time hitting him anyways, and he'll just be stationary on, or he'll be unstationary on his turn anyways. Um, but yeah, people go in, this Dester dies, this Dester dies, uh, two of these Sentinels die, and just a couple guys die, uh, about half these Sentinels die, um, and Imperatus is janked up. At some point, he gets to the point where Imperatus has like seven boxes left, and he's like, it's a waste. I'm not going to be able to finish off, finish him off with Phoenix Protocol. So I'm not going to bother with those seven damage boxes with two wasted attacks. Your Cortex and arms are crippled, so you're just going to end up doing Phoenix Protocol next turn anyways. And he was right. I did end up doing Phoenix Protocol next turn anyways. He didn't waste all that damage and instead used the attacks on Sentinels. So... This is where we are at now. Goreshade has a fat stack of 10 focus and 17 focus. Um, my turn. Imperatus is going to get fully loaded. Goreshade is going to charge into right here and kill two people. And Chimera is going to go over to here so that uh, I can put Dauntless Resolve on this red unit of Sentinels. And two more Sentinels are going to get revived. Um, and this unit's going to get Hand of Ice once Gorshade's in, engaged with them. And then Imperatus and these Sentinels are going to try and kill off everything here and finish off two units completely. Now, this guy right here is actually... Uh, this, this was a mistake and pretty much the only mistake of the game um, on his part, and it, it was an easy mistake to make. Um, when he charged this guy into this proxy base right here, he left the dude there, and that guy was supposed to be proxied. Um, they, but he left him there. So then he started charging everyone else, and usually he leaves one guy behind. He thought this guy was actually here when really he was at the proxy, so he didn't leave one guy behind. Um, and that allows me the opportunity to kill a full unit. And that's that's pretty much what happens. Uh, dice cooperate over here. Artificer goes in. Um, Core Shade got a lot of work done right here. And I killed off those whole units. Over here on this side of the board, there's only these two. And this guy over here, those are the only three of this yellow unit. So between Desterthane killing him, Artificer killing him, Sentinel Vengeance attacks killing them, and him killing them, I finished off the whole yellow unit, and I pushed the lines into his face right here to contest. I also killed off the Frustrum Locus. Uh, that felt really good. And I've basically tr taken attrition off the board for him. Gore Shade's going to be really hard to kill. Um, I've got lots of models all over the place. I've eliminated three whole units that turn. That was that was, that was fantastic. That was everything I needed and more. Um, scenario is fine. It's five to four. I'm up on him. Um, it's not a win condition for him. It is a win condition for me. Because pretty soon here, after this next turn, he's not going to be able to contest over here. And I still have all kinds of things that can go over here and contest. And he doesn't have a way of getting rid of Dester Thane. 
Um, he's also running out of the tools he needs to get rid of all my stuff in the middle. Like best case scenario for him is getting rid of all the stuff in the middle and contesting over here. Um, all these sentinels will be able to go in and get work done. Uh, there, there, there's a lot that can happen and I can start pushing this way and revive's going to start paying off for me. If each turn I'm bringing back two sentinels and if I can finish off whole units and really diminish the re uh, returning rate of his, uh, enigma foundries so yeah it feels really good um he recognizes all this uh we're clock is a thing too so his plan is is he's gonna try and bait a bad assassination run on lucant uh by killing imperatus with lucant uh and then just getting stuff in the way and seeing if i go for an assassination run and if i fail it he's gonna win and kill Gorshade. um so that's more or less what happens. We're, oh, yep, nothing's happened yet. That's just a picture with no proxy basin and just Imperatus. And yeah, so Imperatus died. However, there's still a lot of, there's a lot of Sentinels left. Gorshade just walks to right here, um, smacks Lucant, making him stationary. Um, these Sentinels, uh, he also keeps buying attacks until Lucant's out of sh uh, focus. And then these Sentinels uh, walk over to here, and I get three Weapon Master attacks that kill Lucant. I also had um, the Artificer that can go in as well for extra damage, which Pal 17 Smite really does a lot of work. Uh, I really liked Scorshade for this game. I felt like I played him pretty well, and I, I like his toolkit. I like what he has to offer, and I'm hoping to do more games with him. I can see why people are playing this list. I can see why it's strong. And... It's, it just feels good between the clouds being a, he just, he has so many things. Ghost walk is really valuable. Never cast it. Uh, revive can actually situationally do okay things. Dauntless resolve is awesome. His feet's pretty good. He just got a lot of, he's got a lot of things going for him. I can, I can really see the appeal now that I've put him on the table and played him. Um, but yeah, uh, let me know if you have any questions and thank you guys for watching and hopefully you guys have had a good weekend so far.